Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another prophetic message to start your day. And I want to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Precious saints, the rapture of the church is the sudden supernatural removal of all the children of God that have made themselves ready to be snatched from the earth to heaven. At the rapture, Jesus Christ will appear in the eastern sky and call his wise bride up to heaven, leaving all the foolish Christians, those that are still in sin and unbelievers behind. It will happen in two stages, the first being all the dead in Christ's saints, which will have been free rapture, will rise from their graves in their glorified bodies. And the second stage will be that all the true believers that are alive will go up to be with him on the clouds, precious saints. See, though Jesus will not set foot on the earth at the rapture, he will just appear in the eastern sky and call all of his wise bride home to heaven that have pure white garments. The rapture is a wonderful thing for Christians. The rapture will be yet another very gracious act of God's love towards his children. God loves his children so much that he will remove us from this wicked world to a safe place in heaven before his wrath is released upon the earth. See, God will not allow the beast to devour his saints and will remove them so that they will go to be with him in the wedding feast of the Lamb of God. Precious saints, there are so many people that are receiving visions and rapture dreams that are increasing more and more today. And today, I want us to focus on a compilation of different people's visions and dreams so that you can wake up to also many more people that are receiving these revelations within this hour. It is time for us to wake up, precious saints. Imagine two women grinding in a mill, one taken and one left behind, precious saints. That means that you could be with someone that is raptured and you are left behind. What about two men will be in the field and one will be taken and one will be left behind? Precious saints, it could be one of your very family members that is taken and you are left behind, precious saints. Imagine that. You're frantically looking for your loved ones. You're watching television. You're going to the police station and the police will not even be able to handle this chaos that's about to take place. Precious saints, there are those loved ones that will go to be with the Lord, but others will be left behind. What about our unbelieving spouses when they didn't even believe in the Lord when they had the opportunity? Some of them will be so discouraged. Some of them will be still be looking for missing people only to find out there are nowhere to be sound. Numerous of car accidents will take place in different parts of the world. There will be aeroplane accidents, all sorts of accidents, and people will also die. And 
also go to hell at that time because they didn't know the Lord. Precious saints, it is time for us to seek the Lord in this hour. The Bible promises us in Acts 2.17, in the last days, God says he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, that your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Let's now hear from others. I was in my laundry room and I heard the last trumpet blow. And I opened the door and as soon as I opened the door, I looked up. I looked into the sky. Fire and brimstone was falling from the sky and hitting everything. And they were just like, Mary, what's going on? What's going on? And it just dawned on me. And I just said, Jesus came back, y'all. When I heard that the rapture just happened, I started to cry. And I was like, God, like, why would you leave me behind? A week ago, I had a rapture dream. And it was so real and so scary. And it just really felt like I was there. I actually got left behind in a dream. I had this dream. And um, I w I'm, I'm supposed to share it, is what I was told. I'm still very shaken at my core. I know that he shows me things for a reason and it's not to keep it to myself, but to warn. In this dream, I was taking my dad to get a haircut. And as we went into the building, all of a sudden this guy opens the door and he says, hey, the rapture just happened, the rapture just happened. And he screams it loud. I was in my laundry room where I live now, and I heard the last trumpet blow. And I instantly knew. I ran to my front door and I opened it. Something inside me told me, go back outside and look up. So in the dream, I'm walking with my son. He's one years old. He's in the stroller. And I turned around just for a second and looked up. My son, when I turned back around, my son was just completely gone. I dreamed that I was standing outside, walking around my house. I looked up into the sky, and I saw what looked like the moon. It was big, and it was huge. Bigger than I've ever seen it. And I looked over at the sun, and the moon, the real moon, had actually eclipsed the sun. And it darkened everything. As soon as I realized that, it instantly instantly got dark and in this dream i was with my sisters and we were partying i stopped dancing and i was un had an unction uh to go to the door and i opened the door and as soon as i opened the door i looked up i looked into the sky and i saw in the in the sky in the clouds a huge hole. It looked like there was a huge storm coming um, around the opening in the sky. There was just huge black and gray fluffy clouds like a huge storm. So imagine that in the sky in an opening almost like a square or like a rectangle. So the first thing that I noticed were the, the fireballs shooting up into this opening. <laughs> And I can hear them. I can hear them. They were believers. They were believers of Jesus Christ and they were rejoicing and they were shouting. They were celebrating because the rapture was happening and they made it. And I seen um, what appeared to be a light that had settled. God allowed me to see just the end of it all. I saw it and it was like ripples in the sky and it like the sky just said whoosh, and it went back to like a normal sky. And so I go outside, I open the door and I go outside and I'm like, what? How did that, the rapture just happen? So when I go out there, there's chaos. I'm talking about people stealing, robbing, I mean doing every kind of like evil thing that you can think of they were doing it cars were laying around people were chaotic 
people were breaking in, looting, stealing, and um, breaking into buildings. And when I heard that the rapture just happened, I started to cry because I was like, man, like I talked to God and I was like, God, like, why would you leave me behind? And I got on my knees and I started repenting and asking God for forgiveness. And I told God, forgive me for all my sins. You know, forgive me for everything I've done. Everything was pitch black. Even the stars seemed like they were starting to, they were just like, I could see stars everywhere. And then it just started, they all faded away. The earth was trembling. Fire and brimstone was falling from the sky and hitting everything and it made no sense. And the earth was shaking and everything was being hit. And all I remember was getting in my grandfather's truck and driving away, trying to escape. I just started losing it. Like, where is my child? Where is my child? Then it just is like complete chaos just broke out. I'm just in shambles, I'm so hurt. Like, I don't know where my child is. Everything in the world is just falling apart. I run into this church. When I run into the church, there's people in there. They're crying, they're passing out, they're falling out. Um, people I knew, like I knew personally, were actually in the dream, which is what hurt my heart as well. People who aren't saved. And I start looking up towards the sky and I see something bright. I'm talking about bright. Like you couldn't even stare at it because it was so bright, brighter than the sun. It's crazy because this is like the part that amazes me. Is that I looked up and I'm like, Jesus, am I not gonna be raptured? Like, and I start seeing orbs, these orbs with these white stones in it. And he smiled at me and he kind of like gave me like this glance, like, you know I wasn't gonna forget you. And I could see like his hand throwing me a white stone and a white orb and that orb came towards me. And as I grabbed that white orb, guys, I started floating and as I was going up, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting raptured. I was like so happy. Everybody was so happy. Like everybody was excited. I could not hear um, the believers anymore. I couldn't hear cheering. I couldn't hear anything. I went dead silent as this opening was warping into a circle. And I remember how I was so terrified in my in myself. I knew that was the rapture. In myself, I knew Jesus, God had came for the people. I was still here, I was left. And I was crying so hard because I can't even begin to explain the feeling, the terror, the, um, the absolute hopelessness. I could see the world from where I was. And as I was looking down, I saw my dad and I saw my brother, my twin brother there. And as I looked at him, he was, it's like he was looking up at me and he was asking me where I was at. I, I felt this sadness in my heart. And so it felt like literally I was losing my mind. I was bawling, I was crying so hard. My heart was racing so fast. I felt so hopeless. I felt like, oh my God, like my whole world had just fallen apart. Like I just felt that's like, I couldn't, there's nothing that I could do. It was nothing that I could do. It was too late, it was too late. And I woke up. I think that I forced myself to wake up because I didn't want to see what was to happen next on this earth when the hole closed. I woke up in the dream, but I wasn't actually awake. Something was telling me that I need to share. And they were just like, Mary, what's going on? What's going on? And it just dawned on me. And I just said, Jesus came back, y'all. And I woke up. I was talking to God and I was praying and the Lord just let me know like that dream was for me. But in this dream, it was so real. It was outside my house right here where I lived. I could look up into the sky and I could still see the vision. I could still see the dream. It was it was unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. And and I knew though in my heart I knew I was like this is this is 
God's way of telling me, confirming to me that the rapture is real. Guys, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but Jesus is coming soon. I've had multiple dreams about him coming soon. I've had multiple dreams of the end times. And God is warning people. He said in the last days, we would have visions and dreams and he will reveal these things that are coming upon the earth to his people. He will speak to us in these ways and he's warning us. To be honest with you, it really doesn't seem that like I should be making a video about it per se. It really feels like it was telling me to actually physically go around and share the gospel with other people. And it was God telling me, I have unforgiveness in my heart. I have, I wrote down a list actually, of stuff that I deal with personally. And it's like God told me, I examined the heart. Pride was in my heart. Um, just, it was about four or five other things that were in my heart that were so ugly. And it's crazy because we really think that our heart is so pure. A lot of us do. I did. I thought my heart was so pure. I thought I haven't really done any wrong, you know, to a whole bunch of people. You know, I don't steal. Um, my heart was ugly. And that day it got exposed to me. And God pretty much let me know, like, you're not, you're not all of that. I wasn't focused. I wasn't praying and watching. I was partying. And this is what he said in those days. It'll be the same. He said, he'll come in an hour what we think not. That's when he will come. When we're not watching for him. When the rapture happens and it ends, you don't want to be here. You don't want to see what's to come. You don't want to, you don't want to endure that. This is just suffering and it's the pure um, absence of God's presence of the Holy Spirit is going to be gone from this earth all the love all the joy all the happiness all the peace all the rest all the um, joy of this life of, of the beauty of this world will be gone in an instant when that rapture happens in the blink of an eye and it's done you don't want to be here it's the most scary feeling guys it's the 11th hour and let's get serious with God he is coming and if you're not ready, if you're not um, aligned with God, you will not go. You will stay here and terrible things are going to happen. I know a lot of people say, oh, I, well, I don't mind going through the tribulation. It's not gonna be fun and games. It's not gonna be as easy as you think. It's gonna be a time, the Bible says it, that no one has ever seen, ever. And if the time wasn't cut short, guess what? Everybody would perish. The hour in which we're already seeing the stage being set for, that hour is coming, that hour is coming quickly, it's upon us. And God is warning that he is also soon to come to snatch his church out of here. Those that are ready and you can't try to get ready try you know try to connect at that time because it'll be too late it'll be too late it's where you're showing me it was too too late because in a blink of an eye he's here and he's gone you have to be ready you have to stay ready and i knew that the enemy was in my head in my dream telling me i didn't make it and that i'm gonna be here forever <laughs> but i knew in that moment it wasn't true the enemy enemy was trying to scare me into believing that i didn't get to go up with the rapture I didn't get to be taken up with Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior and I got left behind for like unforgiveness as Christians who have a lot of stuff that we might not admit to the world or we might not show to the world but when it's time to stand in front of God he knows he knows the innermost depths of our part he knows he knows every single part of it. There's nothing that we can hide from him. There's no thoughts that we can hide from him. So we could put on a show for this world if we want to, but God knows. I want to be a kind of way to escape. I know we don't have much time. And for my dreams, he is, he is warning us and we just have to heed the warning. We have to heed the warning. And if we just pay attention we pay attention and we open our eyes and ask God to give us eyes to see.
then we will be able to see the times for what it is. And God will start to reveal things to us and warn us because it's not that he wants any of us to perish, but he wants all men to come to repentance. He tells us in his word and God's word will not come up void. It won't come up void. If he says that you need to forgive so I can forgive you, that's what he means. If he says don't gossip, which it does say in the Bible a lot, we shouldn't be gossiping as Christians. We shouldn't have pride or envy. So it's like the heart, that's like the core of us. And a lot of us, a lot of us just gotta pray for a heart change, a heart that's more like God. We can't be mean to each other. We can't be nasty to each other. We really gotta love people as Christians. And that's basically what that dream showed me. We really have to love people. We really have to love our neighbors as ourselves. We have to set aside our pride, y'all, for the kingdom. Our, our, our attention is so grasped by TV and media and social media and all these things that we are not paying attention to what's happening around us, what's, ha what's going on. And then when it happens, it's too late. When God comes, it's too late. When the warnings are over, when the warnings are over, when he snatches his people out and he's not giving, he's not giving any warnings anymore. That's going to be terrible, a terrible day that I don't want my worst enemy to, to face. I don't want my children. I pray for them all the time. My husband, you know, those that I know around me that are not ready, that are not saved. So let's pray. Let's stay in communion with God. Let's have an intimate relationship. Let's not just say we're Christians just to say we're Christians or say we're all, I am a follower of Christ just to represent and feel prideful about it. No, let's actually live a life that represents the life that, that Jesus himself represented when he was here. Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to save your soul. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want you to go um, through the tribulation and experience the wrath of God. It's going to be disasters. It's going to be the absolute absence of God's presence. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be scary. It's going to be dark. No matter what you believe or think, you know, the reality is, is it'll all come to an end. The world itself was made and created by the word of God. And it's the word of God that said it's gonna come to an end. And that's not a warning just for you, that's a warning for me, and that's a warning for everybody that's not saved. That's a warning for people that are saved. Don't get distracted by the things of this world, by the cares of this world. I just want to challenge anyone who challenge anyone who's watching this just pray and ask God to reveal your heart to you because I had no idea like I knew that I felt some kind of way about people and I actually had to make amends with those people but I didn't think like I would get left behind or like you know what I mean my, my prayers felt cloudy it's just all a healing process. A lot of us have to heal. A lot of us got to get back to the bases, on our faces, praying and really seeking God. Ask him to expose things that are in you that are not of him, and he will do it. And it's horrifying because it turns out I wasn't even really a true Christian before. Now I understand. Praise the Lord. And I am thankful for his mercy. If you're one of those people who are still in your sin, yet you happen to see this video, 
And maybe it puts a little fear in you. I'll tell you the truth. I came back to the Lord because I felt guilt over my sin. Deep down, I felt guilt. And deep down, I could never kill that feeling that I knew there was a God. And fear, the fear of the Lord, is what brought me back to Him. I'm not going to keep this super long, but I'm telling you right now. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the Lord is coming back. Above all else, make sure you're spiritually ready to meet the Lord. First, let me just say, if you're not saved, this is the time to come to know God, come to know Jesus in a saving way. And it's not a game. It's not a game. Once you believe, once you have faith in the Lord, He will come to you. He will fill you with the Holy Spirit. He will take away your depression, your anxiety, your fears. He took away everything from me that was bad and he replaced it with peace and love and fulfillment and everything I've been searching for my whole life. When I found Jesus Christ, it made sense and I didn't have to be alone anymore and I didn't have to walk this life alone anymore because I have Jesus. For so many years, I was alone with my issues and my problems. And I know that God has me and, and God's with me now. And I don't have to be alone. I don't have to feel hopeless. And He is willing. He is willing to accept anybody who is willing to accept Him. Except, it says in the Bible, it says, No one comes to the Father except through me. So you cannot get to God unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Accept Him. Repent from your sin. Turn away from what you're doing. So let's give our life up to Christ while we can still find Him, while He can still be found. The Bible says if you draw close to him, he'll draw close to you. So do that. Because it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Don't run if you are afraid, if that bothers you, if that puts the fear of God into you like it did me, I'm telling you, don't do what most people do. Don't try to push the fear away. Don't try to hide from it. Embrace it. That fear worketh to righteousness. That's all I have to say. I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you all have a blessed day. But how will we finish the race? How will we finish? Will we be caught up in the temple, passing, dying things of this world? Is our soul worth anything here? We really have to ask ourselves that. Because I promise you, it might feel like it's worth it right now. But when reality sets in, like it set in in my dream, it wasn't nothing worth it. Nothing. No amount of money, no big house, no fancy car, no notoriety, no nothing. This is a warning. Wake up. I just hope that this video blesses somebody, could bless somebody. And I really love you guys, whoever's watching this. And my prayer is going to be whoever watches this, they will seek God for themselves, truly seek God and not be deceived because the gate is narrow. And that's just the word I wanted to leave with you guys. You can get salvation. It is a free gift from God. He, he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. We all are not perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. But guess what? Jesus Christ is the way to God. Jesus Christ is our way to our, our Creator, our Father. He is our Savior. So if you come to Jesus, then you get salvation, the free gift from God. Stay excited and ready to fly like angels in the sky. God bless you all. Well, God bless you, brothers. And this is my rapture dream. Take care. God bless.
when I was talking, this massive, really loud trumpet covered the whole sky. And it was so loud, and we were all so scared, we sat down on the ground and we held hands. And I knew that it was time and I was going to be taken and my parents were going to be left. It was just like I saw a figure of a man. And, and now I just started saying, oh my God, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And I just billowing and then they parted. And then I saw like a Jesus like figure in the clouds. And then I started lifting up. I started to lift up. It's like gravity was shut off. And all of a sudden I looked at my feet and my feet were literally floating up. And I was like, and this trumpet was so loud. Like, like, it was so loud. Like literally everyone in the world heard it. You could not miss it. As I was standing there, I heard a loud sound of a trumpet. And it, and it blew for, for, for quite a while. But this one was like very, very low, like a, like a blow horn. Like, so I'm sitting there, and I hear this noise in the sky, and, it, and it's literally like a trumpet, and it's so loud. Let's in, he's waiting 